the past, I have made several videos explaining how to use a GMRS repeater. However, it seems that many people still have much confuculation with regards to using a GMRS repeater with a GMRS radio. And if I'm being honest, I blame myself because as the biggest GMRS radio YouTuber on YouTube, and as the second biggest ham radio YouTuber on YouTube, I take full responsibility. So in this video, I hope to enlighten, educate, and more importantly, enrage some people. However, before I begin, it is important that I spell out in very idiot-proof terms that everything I am about to say applies only to GMRS repeaters and GMRS radios. These steps do not work using a ham radio, and I am only explaining the bare minimum technical requirements needed to connect a GMRS radio to a GMRS repeater. And if you just jumped up from your seat and started furiously typing a comment to declare to everyone that I am wrong about using a ham radio on GMRS repeaters, or that you must also have a GMRS license or permission to use a repeater, just sit back down. Yes, it is possible to use a GMRS repeater with some non-GMRS radios. However, it is not as simple to configure a repeater on a non-GMRS radio as it is to do on a GMRS radio. That is one of the big differences between a real GMRS radio and a ham radio or a business type LMR or UHF radio. As far as needing a GMRS license or getting permission to use a repeater, this video does not cover that. And we do not need some overly pedantic couch-dwelling sad ham to write a 10-paragraph comment telling us that if we don't follow the rules, we will go to jail. If you were about to leave that comment, just go away now and please stop watching my videos. For demonstration purposes, I will be using this Wuxin Ocean KG905G radio, which is a GMRS radio. If you are not sure if your radio is a GMRS radio or not, simply look on the box or on the web page for the radio. And if it says GMRS, then your radio is a GMRS radio. If it does not say GMRS, then you likely did not purchase a GMRS radio. And what I'm about to go over may not apply to you and your radio. If your radio is a GMRS radio, then all of the steps that I'm about to reveal will be pretty much the same. The menus might look slightly different, but the general steps will be the same on all GMRS radios. Assuming you have a GMRS radio, the next thing you will need in order to use a repeater is the information about the repeater of which you wish to use. There are many places to obtain this information, such as other local GMRS users, often referred to as your friends, your local radio dork club, or on the interweb at websites like mygmrs.com. At a minimum, before you can use a GMRS repeater, you will need to know what channel or frequency the repeater uses. Either the receive channel or frequency or the transmit channel or frequency. It does not matter which. And you will need the transmit tone. That is to say, the tone that your radio needs to transmit to the repeater in order to activate the repeater, or as the radio experts say, in order to open the repeater. This tone is also sometimes referred to as the input tone. And those are the only two things that you need to use a GMRS repeater. Allow me to say that again for those viewers that might be having trouble following along. Number one, you need to know either the transmit or receive frequency or channel. And number two, you need to know the repeater's 
transmit or input tone. And that is all you need. Anything else is optional and is not required in order to make use of a repeater. You do not need to worry about splits or bandwidth or the operational mode or anything else because on a GMRS radio, none of that is relevant because the radio takes care of all of that for you. All of that extra and unnecessary stuff is only relevant to some people that apparently have an uncontrollable urge to overcomplicate things in what seems to be a pathological desire to let everyone know how smart they think they are. So assuming that you have the minimum amount of information needed in order to use a repeater, we may now move along to injecting that information into the radio, starting with the channel or frequency. Every repeater-capable GMRS radio has a minimum of eight channels set aside for repeaters. These are channels 23 through channel 30, and those channels align with the regular simplex channels 15 through channel 22. Stay with me now. This is because GMRS shares simplex or regular channels with repeater channels. However, Repeater channels are different. It is all very complicated and confuculating, so I will not confuculate you more with those details because they do not matter. Just trust me and follow along. And don't worry, you are doing great. You can do this. If you have ever gone online looking for repeater information, you have probably seen that most repeater listings show only frequencies. But to set up our GMRS radio to use the repeater, we need to know what repeater channel to use. And this can be a source of much confocularity. But do not let your heart be troubled because it is very easy to figure out. As you can see on the listing page for my repeater, which we will use as an example, it says the frequency is 462.600, which is the frequency that the repeater transmits on. Some listings might show 467600, which is the frequency the repeater receives on. But it does not matter. All you have to care about is the part after the decimal. And in our example, this would be the 600. Ignore the 462, 600 is all that matters. Now we just have to figure out what GMRS channel 600 corresponds to. And to do that, simply use your favorite search engine and search for GMRS channel frequencies. Then pick any of the 10 million web pages that come up in the search results, and you will quickly find that 600 or 6,000 or 6 million, it does not matter because if you recall from your third grade math classes, you will remember that it does not matter how many zeros there are. And we can see that 600 corresponds to GMRS channel 17. So if the regular corresponding GMRS channel is 17, then I need to use the repeater channel that corresponds with channel 17. On my Wuxin, Ocean KG905G, that channel is conveniently named RPT, short for repeater, 17. Some radios might name the repeater channels 1 through 8. So repeater channel 1 would correspond to GMRS channel 15. Repeater number 2 would be GMRS 16. And our example, GMRS channel 17, would be repeater channel 3. So all I have to do now is go to repeater channel 17, which conveniently I have done already, and enter my input tone. As mentioned earlier, this is the tone that my radio transmits to the repeater to activate it. And on most GMRS radios, this is very simple to do. I simply ensure that I am on the correct channel, which in our example is repeater 17. I then go into the menus and I find the transmit tone option. 
RX is the receive tone option. TX is the transmit tone option. And in our example, that tone number is DPL 023. And just as a refresher, DPL, DTC, and DCS are all the same thing. And CTC, CTS, and PL are all the same thing, just two different types of tones. So all you need to do is pick the correct type in the menu, in our case, DTC, and select the tone from the list. In our example, tone D023. I then save the tone, and that, my friend, is all you need to do. The repeater is now programmed on this radio on repeater channel 17. And if I did everything correctly, and if I am in range of the repeater, I should now be able to push upon the trigger button. And when I let go of the trigger button, I should hear a static sound, also known as a kickback from the repeater. And as you just heard with your very own ear holes, it worked. So I can now use this repeater on this channel. You're welcome. <laughs>